Chapter 9 The Passing Away of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna. Sutta Goswami said, Being afraid for having killed so many subjects on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Maharaj Yudhishthir went to the scene of the massacre. There Bhishma Dev was lying on a bed of arrows about to pass away. At that time all his brothers followed him on beautiful chariots drawn by first class horses decorated with gold ornaments. With them were Vyas and Rishis like Domya, the learned priest of the Pandavas, and others. O sage amongst the Brahmins, Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, also followed, seated on a chariot with Arjun. Thus King Yudhishthir appeared very aristocratic, like Kuvera surrounded by his companions, the Guhyakas. Seeing Bhishma lying on the ground like a demigod fallen from the sky, the Pandava king Yudhishthir, along with his younger brothers and Lord Krishna, bowed down before him. Just to see the chief of the descendants of King Bharat, Bhishma, all the great souls in the universe, namely the rishis amongst the demigods, brahmins and kings, all situated in the quality of goodness were assembled there. All the sages like Parvat Muni, Narad, Domya, Vyas, the incarnation of God, Brihadashva, Bharadvaj, and Parashurama and disciples, Vasishta, Indra Pramada, Trita, Gritsamada, Asita, Kakshivan, Gotama, Atri, Kaushika, and Sudarshan were present. And many others like Shukdev Goswami and other purified souls, Kashyapa, Angirasa, and others, all accompanied by their respective disciples, arrived there. Bhishma Dev, who is the best amongst the eight Vasus, received and welcomed all the great and powerful rishis who were assembled there, for he knew perfectly all the religious principles according to time and place. Lord Sri Krishna is situated in everyone's heart, yet he manifests his transcendental form by his internal potency. This very Lord was sitting before Bhishma Dev, and since Bhishma Dev knew of his glories, he worshipped him duly. The sons of Maharaj Pandu were sitting silently nearby, overtaken with affection for their dying grandfather. Seeing this, Bhishma Dev congratulated them with feeling. There were tears of ecstasy in his eyes, for he was overwhelmed by love and affection. Bhishma Dev said, Oh, what terrible sufferings! And what terrible injustices you good souls suffer for being the sons of religion personified. You did not deserve to remain alive under those tribulations. Yet, yet you were protected by the Brahmins, God and religion. As far as my daughter-in-law Kunti is concerned, upon the great General Pandu's death, she became a widow with many children, and therefore she suffered greatly. And when you were grown up, 
she suffered a great deal also because of your actions. In my opinion, this is all due to inevitable time, under whose control everyone in every planet is carried, just as the clouds are carried by the wind. Oh, how wonderful is the influence of inevitable time. It is irreversible. Otherwise, how can there be reverses in the presence of King Yudhishthir, the son of the demigod controlling religion? Bhima, the great fighter with a club, the great bowman Arjun with his mighty weapon Gandiva, and above all, the Lord, the direct well-wisher of the Pandavas. O King, no one can know the plan of the Lord Sri Krishna. Even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively, <laughs> they are bewildered. O best among the descendants of Bharat, I maintain, therefore, that all this is within the plan of the Lord. Accepting the inconceivable plan of the Lord, you must follow it. You are now the appointed administrative head, and, my Lord, you should now take care of those subjects who are now rendered helpless. This Sri Krishna is no other than the inconceivable, original, personality of Godhead. He is the first Narayan, the supreme enjoyer. But he is moving amongst the descendants of King Vrishni just like one of us. And he is bewildering us with his self-created energy. O King, Lord Shiva, Narad, the sage amongst the demigods, and Kapila, the incarnation of Godhead, all know very confidentially about his glories through direct contact. O King, that personality whom, out of ignorance only, you thought to be, to be your maternal cousin, your very dear friend, well-wisher, counselor, messenger, benefactor, etc., is that very personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Being the absolute personality of Godhead, he is present in everyone's heart. He is equally kind to everyone, and he is free from the false ego of differentiation. Therefore, whatever he does is free from material inebriety. He is equibalanced. Yet, despite his being equally kind to everyone, he has graciously come before me while, while I am ending my life, for I am his unflinching servitor. The personality of Godhead, who appears in the mind of the devotee by attentive devotion and meditation, and by chanting of the holy name, releases the devotee from the bondage of fruit of activities at the time of his quitting the material body. May my Lord, who is four-handed and whose beautifully decorated lotus face with eyes as red as the rising sun is smiling, kindly await me at that moment when I quit this material body. Maharaj Yudhishthir, after hearing Bhishmadev speak in that appealing tone, asked him, in the presence of all the great rishis, about the essential principles of various religious duties. 
At Maharaj Yudhisthira's inquiry, Bhishma Dev first defined all the classifications of castes and orders of life in terms of the individual's qualifications. Then he systematically, in twofold divisions, described counteraction by detachment and interaction by attachment. He then explained by divisions, acts of charity, the pragmatic activities of a king, and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees, both briefly and extensively. Then he described the occupational duties of different orders and statuses of life, citing instances from history, for he was himself well acquainted with the truth. While Bhishmadev was describing occupational duties, the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere. This period is desired by mystics who die at their will. Thereupon that man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings, and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men, stopped speaking and, being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who stood before him, four-handed, dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined. By pure meditation, Looking at Lord Sri Krishna, he at once was freed from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds. Thus all the external activities of his senses at once stopped, and he prayed transcendentally to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body. Bhishmadev said, Let me now invest my thinking, feeling, and willing, which was so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties in the all-powerful Lord Sri Krishna. He is always self-satisfied, but sometimes, being the leader of the devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by, by descending on the material world, although from him only the material world is created. Sri Krishna is the intimate friend of Arjun. He has appeared on this earth in his transcendental body, which resembles the bluish color of the tamal tree. His body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems. May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face, covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp, be the object of my attraction, and may I not desire fruitive results. On the battlefield where Sri Krishna attended Arjun out of friendship, the flowing hair of Lord Krishna turned ashen due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses. And, and because of his labor, beads of sweat wetted his face. All these decorations, intensified by the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows, were enjoyed by him. Oh! Let my mind thus go unto Sri Krishna. In obedience to the command of his friend, Lord Sri Krishna entered the arena of the battlefield of Kurukshetra between the soldiers of Arjun and Duryodhana. And while there, he shortened the lifespans of the opposite party by his merciful glance. This was done simply by his, his looking at the enemy. Oh, let my mind be fixed upon that Krishna. 
when Arjun was seemingly polluted by ignorance upon observing the soldiers and commanders before him on the battlefield. The Lord eradicated his ignorance by delivering transcendental knowledge. Oh, may his lotus feet always remain the object of my attraction. Fulfilling my desire and sacrificing his own promise, he got down from the chariot. Arjun's chariot field of Kurukshetra attained their original forms after death. Let my mind be fixed upon Sri Krishna, whose motions and smiles of love attracted the damsels of Rajadham, the gopis. The damsels imitated the characteristic movements of the Lord after his disappearance from the Ras dance. At the Raja Surya Yagya, the sacrifice performed by Maharaj Yudhisthira, there was the greatest assembly of all the elite men of the world, the royal and learned orders. And in that great assembly, Lord Sri Krishna was worshipped by one and all as the most exalted personality of Godhead. This happened during my presence and I remembered the incident in order to keep my mind upon the Lord. Now I can meditate with full concentration upon that one Lord, Sri Krishna, now present before me. Because now, now I have transcended the misconceptions of duality in regard to his presence in everyone's heart, even in the hearts of the mental speculators. He is in everyone's heart. The sun may be perceived differently, but the sun is one. Sutta Goswami said, Thus Bhishma Dev merged himself in the Super Soul, Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, with his mind, speech, sight, and actions. And thus he became silent, and his breathing stopped. Knowing that Bhishma Dev had merged into the unlimited eternity of the Supreme Absolute, all present there became silent, like birds at the end of the day. Thereafter, both men and demigods sounded drums in honor, and the honest royal order commenced demonstrations of honor and respect, and from the sky fell showers of flowers. O descendant of Brigu, Shonika, after performing funeral rituals for the dead body of Bhishma Dev, Maharaj Yudhishthir was momentarily overtaken with grief. All the great sages then glorified Lord Sri Krishna, who was present there by confidential Vedic hymns. Then all of them returned to their respective hermitages, bearing always Lord Krishna within their hearts. Thereafter, Maharaj Yudhisthira at once went to his capital, Hastinapur, accompanied by Lord Sri Krishna. And there he consoled his uncle and Aunt Gandhari, who was an ascetic. After this, the great religious king, Maharaj Yudhisthira, executed the royal power in the kingdom strictly according to the codes and royal principles approved by his uncle and confirmed by Lord Sri Krishna. Thus ends the ninth chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled 
the passing away of Vishmadev in the presence of Lord Krishna. Lying on a bed of arrows, about to pass away. At that time, all his brothers followed him on beautiful chariots drawn by first-class horses decorated with gold ornaments. With them were Vyas and Rishis like Domya, the learned priest of the Pandavas, and others. O sage amongst the Brahmins, Lord Sri Krishna, the Personality of Godhead, also followed, seated on a chariot with Arjuna. Thus King Yudhisthira appeared very aristocratic, like Kuvera surrounded by his companions, the Guhyakas. Seeing Bhishma lying on the ground like a demigod fallen from the sky, the Pandava King Yudhisthira, along with his younger brothers and Lord Krishna, and now chapter 9, the passing away of Bhishmadev in the presence of Lord Krishna. <laughs> Sutta Goswami said, Being afraid for having killed so many subjects on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Maharaj Yudhishthira went to the scene of the massacre. There Bhishmadev was lying... <laughs> 